Hi, welcome back to my channel Sopninga, let us stream together. In today's video, we are going to talk about electric circuits. So let's answer our first question. What is an electric circuit? An electric circuit is a path for transmitting electric current. In an electric circuit, there are things called components. There are four main basic components. The energy source, the conductor, the electric load, and at least one controller. Let's begin with the energy source. The source of energy from an electric circuit is from a cell or more cells. When it is more than one cell, then we call it a battery. The cells or batteries is marked with a number called voltage. Cells can come in many different sizes. There are AA cells, AAA cells, D cells and more. Have you noticed something on the cell in the cell holder? There is one red wire and there is a black wire. The red wire connects to the positive terminal of the cell. The positive terminal of the cell is marked with a positive sign. The black wire connects to the negative terminal of the cell. The negative terminal of the cell is marked with a negative sign. So now we've got our energy source. Let's move on to the conductor. The conductor in an electric circuit are made of materials that carry or conduct electrons more easily than other materials. Materials that conduct electrons more easily are called conductors. Copper and aluminium are good conductors. For safety precaution, we are commonly using insulated connecting wires. These wires are still conductors, but it is wrapped with an insulator, so it will prevent short circuits and protect you from electric shocks. Short circuiting is when electric current passes down the wrong or unintended path with little or no electric resistance. It can cause serious damage, fire, and even small-scale explosions. In fact, short circuits are one of the leading causes for structural fires around the globe. So, we must be vigilant when we are busy designing, executing, and working with electricity because it can risk our lives and properties as well as others. Now, we're going to learn about the electric load. An electric load is the electrical component or portion of a circuit that consumes power such as a light bulb, buzzer, motor and etc. We have almost got all our components but wait a minute how are we going to control them? This is where our controller of the circuit comes in the switch. A switch allows the electricity to pass through it or stops the electricity. Just imagine a circuit without a switch it's weird, isn't it? Just for example, a light bulb will be on until the energy source will be, light, will be run out. So the controller is a very important item of the electric circuit. So this is my advice to all of you. Everyone should know their house main electric circuit breaker location and how to turn it off. If a person is getting electric shock, then you mustn't touch the person until you've made sure that the main electric circuit breaker is turned off as well as when other electric emergencies like short circuits occur. If the source of the electric shock is from a high voltage wire or lightning then please contact your local emergency numbers. Overhead power lines which are carried by pylons usually aren't insulated. Stay at least 6 meters away. If the wires are jumping and sparking, stay further away. Don't get near these wires until the power is turned off. In either case, an electric shock passing through a human being can cause internal damage, cardiac arrest or other injuries like burns on the skin. The danger from an electric shock depends on the type of current, how high the voltage is, how it travels through the body the person's overall health and how quickly the person got medical attention no matter what even the small 
amount of electricity can be fatal. While you are waiting for medical help, take these actions immediately. Turn off the source of electricity as soon as possible if you can. If you can't, then try to move the source away from you and the injured person. To do this, you can use a dry insulating object made of cardboard, wood or plastic. And make sure you do not get an electric shock because your life and the injured person's life is in your hands. So be careful. If the person shows no signs of circulation, such as breathing, coughing or movement, then begin with a CPR as soon as possible. You must try to prevent the person from becoming chilled. If there are any burnt areas, then you can use a sterilized gauze bandage if available, or you can use a clean cloth. You mustn't use a blanket or a towel because the loose fibers can stick to the wound. Thank you for watching this video. If you find this video informative, then please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Till then, stay tuned to my channel. Bye-bye.